All right, first off, y'all, I want to give all praises to Howard by Shamal Shah. Um, in this video, as I see by the title, we're going to be talking about um, the Edomites. Um, and before I get into the video and everything, um, if y'all follow me on TikTok, and I know a lot of people may come from TikTok over here and watch my videos. But uh, if y'all do, y'all seen I, I got banned. <laughs> I got banned on my live because um, of the fact that some dude came in there. I think he was he was like, you know, on there cussing their thing. And, you know, at the same time, too, talking about some 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 random stuff that they ain't, ain't had nothing to do with nothing at all. He he didn't believe that slavery happened. He don't even, he don't even believe that he didn't even believe that it, it, it even it, that I don't think uh what's called slave ships or I don't, I don't know I don't know what his whole I don't know what it was for him but uh I got banned basically because of him right so um now I gotta wait I gotta wait a whole week you know what I'm saying to get my account uh back unbanned from live so I'm 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 still I'm still able to like you know to post videos and stuff but I'm not able to go on live though but um until then I'm I'm gonna you know take the time out to make videos for y'all. And at the same time, edify y'all with uh, certain scriptures and certain topics. And like I said, as of right now, I'm focusing on, you know, the whole uh, who are the Edomites for right now. Because Y'all look, the thing about it is, right, anybody can just say that the Edomites are white people. But if they don't have, like, you know what I'm saying, enough proof or any ways to prove that, you know what I'm saying, then it's like it's null and void, you know what I'm saying? So what I want to do is at least, you know, let people uh, know how the Edomites are the white man or how the Edomites are, or Esau is the white man more than the child. And to give y'all, you know, all the proof in the world, well, not all the proof, but, you know, just enough proof that can, you know, um, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, make that notion valid, you know what I'm saying? And also, I'm, I'm also address uh, just specifically how some people may, some people may say that the Edomites um, nowadays are the Arabs or how the white man came from Jaffa. We're going to talk about all that, you know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about all that and edify y'all, you know what I'm saying, enough to the point where you can even go to other people and explain to them why Esau may be the white man or how he's a white man. If somebody may ask that question, because, you know, the Bible says always be ready to answer. Anytime somebody may ask you a question, be ready to answer, you know what I'm saying? So some people may, may get stuck on, like, you know, getting that question of, oh, it's Esau, how is Esau the white man, all that stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give y'all proof. I'm going to give y'all all the proof that y'all may need. You know what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. All right. So the first verse I want to go into, I want to go to Genesis 25. I want to go to Genesis 25, all right? Genesis 25. And just going going into the origins of the white man, you know what I'm saying, to explain, um, you know what I'm saying, who he is and, you know, who his forefather, who the forefathers of the white man is. So it reads, and the first came out red, Genesis 25, 25, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau, all right? So I know some people may try to make this argument and say, oh, look, it didn't say that uh, he came out red. It said that he came out. It, it said that his hair was red. But this is this, this that that lets me know that you don't have a lot of people may not have a uh, simple reading comprehension because it literally it literally said that the, that he came out red. He came out red, and then it, it kind of explained exactly how red he was. Right? It said he came out red all over like a hairy garment. So all over his body. He was red like a hairy garment, all right? He was red like a hairy garment. It didn't say that his hair was red. It's saying he came out red like a hairy garment. So for y'all, for people that may try to say that or try to get their way out of, out of Esau being coming out red and everything, this just, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to like, you know, further explain this to y'all, you know what I'm saying? But he came out red like a hairy garment, all right? So now let's go deeper into the Bible to ex understand what this hairy garment is, or um, we're going we're going to explain all this. All right, so here we go to Exodus twenty five, slot twenty five. Exodus twenty five is I think this is the first time where you basically see 
the hairy garment or this red hairy garment being being described, right? Exodus 25 and verse 5. It reads, and ram skin dot red. And ram skin dot red. All right. And then I think that even the same thing is, is applied in uh, Exodus 26 and 14 when it says, and thou shalt make a covering for the tents of ram skin dot red. Ram skin dot red. All right. So when you look up, look, let me look it up real quick. Ram skin dot red. This is how red Esau was. He was red as a ram skin dot red, all right? That's how red Esau was, all right? This is going deeper into exactly how it was describing him and how his body looked, right? And basically, he was red enough to where you could see his blood through his body, basically, all right? And he, at the same time, too, when you go into looking up uh, Caucasian babies and all that stuff, uh, what, what was it? It was um, it was a, a certain, a certain um, what's call it? A link that I went to. We talked about how Caucasian babies, like when they come out the when they come out the womb, they're usually red. When they come out the womb, they're right here. It says uh, sick about about kids' health. It says right here, Caucasian babies, whatever. Caucasian babies are often dull red or dull bluish gray in color. All right, these are the main two colors that they come out as for, for uh, Caucasian babies, right? Which basically supports the claim, or supports supports the fact that the Bible says how Esau came out red, right? Or how Esau he is the white man, all right? Because there's no other baby that come out the womb that's red except white people. It even describes how dark skin babies come out. It said dark skin babies are often um purplish gray. That's not red. Purplish gray is not red. So literally, there are hospitals in this and this this one. And there's even even more links that I could probably go to. To further prove how, you know what I'm saying, uh, white, baby, white babies come out red, you know what I'm saying? But it's just common sense, you know what I'm saying, to know how white people, even when they uh, when they grow up and when they're uh, fully developed in their body, their their skin is still red. They're not white. The word white was just used to, like, you know, try to, uh, the word white represents purity, all right? And they try to use black to represent evil, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole agenda that, that they had behind the whole red, I mean, white versus black thing. It wasn't about their actual skin color. It was about whether or not they were pure. The white, the way whiteness represent purity and innocence when they're, they're not pure innocent at all. <laughs> they cause all, all the all the pain and suffering in the world. All the pain and suffering in the world came from them. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that they try to use the word white to represent their purity when they're not pure at all. But the whole point is that they came out red, all right? They came out, Esau came out red, which is just there's a little bit of evidence showing you how uh Esau is the white man, all right? Just a little bit of evidence, okay. So now let's go into the blessing that Esau received. Because when it comes down to, you know what I'm saying, this blessing, it helps you uh, further expound on how Esau is the white man. All right. So Genesis 27 and 28. Genesis 27 and 28. Let me see something real quick, slock you before I get to it. See something real quick. Mm. See something real quick. Let me see. Mm. I don't know why it's not. But it's, it's all good. It's all good. All right. So, Genesis 27 28, it reads Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. So this was the blessing that was given to Esau, all right? One of the main blessings given to Esau was the fatness of the earth. And you're going to say the fatness of the earth. What is the, what is the fatness? As I just showed y'all a little bit, the fatness, is, it represents uh, oil, all right? So it's fat, fat, fatness, fat pieces, oil, olive oil. So basically, one of Esau's blessings is oil. He would have a lot of a lot of production, in, or not, not a lot of production, but a lot of, um, uh, uh, what's what I'm trying to look for? Basically, oil will, will oil will be very prevalent. You know, what I'm saying in the in the community or in the, in the, uh, any nation that Esau may rule. All right, he will have a lot of fat, a lot of uh, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Basically, he he will be blessed with, with you know the uh, luxury of oil. Basically, you know what I'm trying to say. That's that's all I'm trying to say. All right, so 
when you look up this real quick about how much oil production is in certain countries, let me show you some. The United States and Russia are the two main countries that, that are ruled by white people, all right, by the so called white man, woman, and child. Okay. And they have a year, and they, I don't know if this is like updated, but I think this is probably from 2020, if I remember correctly. But basically, they have over 25 billion barrels of oil produced every single day. All right. Or this is a yearly, yearly, you know what I'm saying? But um, literally, they have the, the top, they're, they're part of the top three uh, countries that have the most oil production. Okay. And these are both white, white, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, right ran by white people both of these countries both of these countries are, are ran, ran by white people all right so russia and, and the united states combined have over 25 billion uh barrels of oil produced you know what i'm saying every single year all right now some people may try to say oh that but esau uh he now the edomites they're uh the arabs they're they're, they're the, um, the arabs but first of all if they're the arabs then you know Saudi Arabia only had 12, 12, 12 billion, um, which call it barrels of oil produced compared to the 25 billion combined from the US and Russia. So the cut there. All right. So that's that's clear cut evidence letting you know how one of the blessings of Esau was going to be the fatness of the earth, which was oil, and how oil production will be very a very, you know what I'm saying, a huge factor in determining exactly who Esau is and, and, and identifying who he is today. All right. So now let me show you something real quick. I know a lot of people may have an issue with, uh, you know what I'm saying? They may have an issue with um, Esau coming out red and they'll say, oh, look, Jacob Esau, they were twins. So that means that both of them had to be had to be white, right? If both, if, if both of them had to be red, right? There's something called fraternal twins, all right? They, they were not identical. They were fraternal, meaning that they came out looking different. They have different features than each other. All right, so they might try to say that it's it's impossible. But I thought through I thought through Christ all things are possible. I thought I thought all things are possible through Christ. All things are possible. But I guess when it comes down to Jacob Esau, it's not possible that a white baby and a black baby and a black baby can be born from the same woman. But okay. But literally, you can look up in the news yourself, and even look up on, on online many art articles that shows you how there are white babies and black or white and black twins. It came out the same boom. All right. This is just one of them. It says UK, UK twins turn heads. One is white, the other is black. So they're twins, but they're fraternal. They're not identical. They're fraternal. They have two very distinct features. One of them is melanated, the other one is. All right. That's red. Came out red. This one came out black. Or so-called melanin or brown. I'll say that. Not black. But that just gives gives heed to the to the uh fact that. Esau is a white man, though, and also to show you how uh, it is possible for this to happen. It's not anything anything crazy or anything far-fetched. It's actually possible for a white man and a black man or a white woman and a black woman to come out, out of the same uh, woman, all right? Now, I'm going to show you something real quick, because this this goes deeper into, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, who the white man is or, or where he came from, all right? So look, this is a right here, this little statue, whatever this little thing is right here, this is the ancient Edomite uh, goddess, uh, Kwa, Kwa, Q-O-S, Kwa, all right? And this is how they depicted, um, you know what I'm saying, this, this Edomite goddess, all right? And does it not look like these two white women right here? Let me just zoom, zoom in for y'all real quick so y'all can see it. So y'all can see, y'all can see it. Let me see. Can I? I don't know if I can zoom in, but y'all should be able to see it for real. But basically, they have like a, a, a freaking big nose, little lips. And these two white women have that same depiction. That freaking big nose, little lips, big nose, little lips. You know what I'm saying? And basically, that, that this this is the, pic, the, the uh, depiction of a white woman. Literally, when it comes down to the uh, goddesses or gods that uh, these nations make, they look just like their people. There is there is no other god, you know. Like when it comes down to like even uh the uh, Moabites, right? When you look up the Moabite sarcophagus, their gods look just like the people. Literally, when you look at this image, what does it look like? It looks like a Chinese person. 
little lip, like you know what I'm saying, it's like slanted eyes, you know what I'm saying, little lips. It looks just like a Chinese person. So these guys that, that these people, these, these nations make, they look just like the people. So the same thing is, is with this. The same thing applies here. When they make a god, their gods will look just like them. Their god, goddesses, whatever it may be. Also, look at this. Let me see if I can. Um, I don't know why I can't. Let me see if I can pull it up. Hold on. Slocky, y'all. Uh, see if I can pull it up real quick. Let's see if this is it. Nope. Um, where is it at? Slocky, y'all. Slocky. Right here. All right. So, this is another um, little ancient relic or little statue, a little uh, clay figure that the Edomites made of themselves. It says right here, this is a book called The New Light on the Edomites. And it was written by a white man. And he even, even in, in his book admitted how he was Edomite. In this, in this book, talking about the Edomites, he admitted that the white man and that he himself was the Edomite, literally. And this is a little, a little statue a little figure that depicted the Edomites, or one of one of the, one of the Edomites, and does this not look like does this not look like a white man? If this if, if this don't look like a white man, I don't know I don't know what to say. Look like Laura Farquhar. I forgot who this dude was, but this this it looks like look like Laura, Laura Farquhar from Shrek. But I know who that is, Laura Farquhar. But that's that's just you know this this proof proof to let you know how uh. Esau is the white man. Just simple, simple proof, simple proof. You know what I'm saying? And going to like, you know, when you go into archaeology, that's that's one thing that a lot of people can't can't deny. You can't deny archaeology. When there is archaeology and like, you know what I'm saying, uh, it's like it's like set in stone. Literally, it's set in stone. You can't deny it. It's 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 in your face, it's right there, it's 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 provable, it's proved, you know what I'm saying, through history, archaeology, and all that stuff. So, you know. They're literally it's it's right there in your face. All right. Now, uh, let's continue. Now I'm I'm show you something real quick. Kind of going to um how the Edomites or the white man today, even though he is the Edom, he is the Edomite, you know what I'm saying? He is Esau. But the way that they kind of try, try they try to they try to hide it, you know what I'm saying? They try to hide it and try to mask mask the mask, you know what I'm saying, their true identity to make it seem like there's something that they're really not, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's all about just stealing some some that, that that you know they're stealing something or hiding something. It's hiding the truth. That's that's what the Edomite is all about. The Edomite is all about lying, all about hiding, being sneaky, being very you know what I'm saying wicked and uh, deceitful to the people. So you know I, I'm I'm going to go, and that's why the Bible said that he uncover um their hiding places. You know what I'm saying? In in this end time right now, knowledge, knowledge is being increased, and their hiding places are being revealed. You know what I'm saying? So now there's no way for the for the white man to hide who they truly are. We know who they are now. You know what I'm saying? We know who they are. There's no way to get no, no way to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? No way. No way. All right. So second first Samuel 15 and 8. I'm, I'm just kind of show y'all how the Edomites try to change their identity or try to evolve it in, in a way to get people to not know who they really are. You know what I'm saying? To not even realize that they that they're the uh Edomites or the white man. All right. So uh Salakia. So verse eight, it says, "Now took Agag, Agag, right? He took Agag, king of the Amalekites, king of the Amalekites. All right. Now I'm I'm gonna show y'all how Amalek is the grandson of Esau, right? But Agag, he was the king of them at one point in time. All right. Agag was the king of, of the Amalekites at one point in time. All right. Keep that in mind. And it says, uh, from Habila." Slock it, no, no. And it utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword, all right? So once again, Agag, he's the king of the Amalekites. He's the king of, of the Amalekites. So let's go into the uh, genealogy of Esau, all right, to see who his family was. So Genesis 36, now starting verse 10, it says, these are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, so you, got, you got Eliphaz, Eliphaz, one of his sons, Ruel, another son. Then Eliphaz were uh the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Katam, and Kanaz, 
and Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bears to Eliphaz, Amalek. So Amalek, he's the grandson of Esau. Amalek is the grandson of Esau, all right? Keep that in mind. Amalek is the grandson of Esau. And when you go back, once again, it says Agag, he was the king of the Amalekites, all right? So let me go to do, 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 do. Esther real quick. Esther 3 and 1. It reads, and at, after these things, the uh, king of uh, As Asuras promote Haman, the son of uh, Hamadita, Hamadat, Hamadatha, the Agagite. All right. So Haman, Haman, he was an Agagite. What is the Agagite? Let's go into it real quick. What is the Agagite? Agagite said of Haman, Haman, Agagite, Agagite, descendant of Ag Agag. All right. And it says right now, it says right here, it says of Haman equals Amalekite. All right. So there's even there's even some dispute. It, it, and the reason why it has is this uh, little question mark right here, I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you why it has that has a little like little question mark because of the fact that people people didn't understand exactly how his um his uh nationality kind of like changed in the Bible. Cause I'm like, like I said, this this all this all goes into the confusion. That Esau try to uh, that the white man try to um, you know put on our people and put even even to the, the rest of the people to make it seem like there's something that they're really not. It's caused confusion among the people and to really hide the true identity and make people just think that they're just all good and that you know the history of, of what they did to our people that you know they don't exist. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it's all it's all exposed now. You know what I'm saying? But Agag Agag though he was one of the um uh. He he was part of the the uh, descendants of Esau though. Agag was part of the descendants of Esau. All right. So now let's go, let's go back. And now let me go to the, uh, the additions of Esther real quick to show you how Haman Haman like I said he was called an Agagite. All right. Haman was called an an uh, Agagite. Okay. An Agagite. So I'm going to additions addition the additions of Esther chapter sixteen verse ten. It reads. For Amon, a Macedonian. All right. It said he was a Macedonian. So Amon, in this, in this part right here, he's called an Agagite. All right. But right here, he's called a Macedonian. So, like, what's what's going on? How why is he why did he turn from a uh a, a Agagite to a Macedonian? That that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that, like how why, like what what's going on? All right, what, what's going on? Letting you know how once again their identity changed over time. Or just how they, they hid their identity, all right? To avoid having people know who they truly are. All right. So in Esther three and one, he's considered an Agagite, but right here he's called a Macedonian. All right. Either way, though, this all goes back to the Edomites. It's all go back to the Edomites. And to even show you how crafty they really are, that they're crafty and how they, um, you know, what I'm saying, um, do certain things and do everything. To be honest, not just not a certain things, but everything. It's how they walk, how they talk. They're very crafty and, and very slick. You know what I'm saying? So now let me go to First Maccabees real quick. Go to First Maccabees, and right, and this this right here is just like I said, just mentioning that just kind of helps you, like you know, helps you understand um, how. The identity kind of evolved over time and how they changed the way that they uh how the, the way that people perceive them, you know what I'm saying? How they may nowadays call themselves, you know, Jewish people, but then they're not really Jews, you know what I'm saying? There's this basically like you no know, hiding all the truth, hiding all the history behind who they really are, and not really telling tell the actual truth, you know what I'm saying? But now that's come to the light, that they're, they're scared, you know what I'm saying? They're scared that you know they're gonna get exposed for that, or that they are get exposed for that. And that, like, in the light, everything that's in the dark is coming to the light. You know what I'm saying? But let me go to First Maccabees. All right. First Maccabees, chapter one, verse one. And it reads, And it happened after the, after that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, right, who came out of the land of Chetum, or Chetum, I want to pronounce that, has spitten Darius, the king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in, in his steed, the first over Greece. So let's go into, uh, Let's let's go into 
Alexander real quick and see what dynasty he came from. Because I feel like that's that's very that's very important, you know what I'm saying, to note and to uh, understand what dynasty he came from, right? So look, y'all, y'all read this right here, right? The Argaid dynasty, the Argaid dynasty, that's the dynasty that, that King Alexander came from, right? Also known as the Timonid dynasty. The Timonid dynasty, keep that in mind, Timonid, all right? was an ancient Macedonian royal house of Dorian Greek provenance. They were the founders in the ruling dynasty of the kingdom of Macedon from about 700 to 310 BC, all right? So basically, the Argaid dynasty was also called the Timonid dynasty, all right? The Timonid dynasty. And like, once again, keep this all in mind because of the fact that this, this gives uh, heed to how sneaky and how tricky the white man is to hide his identity and to also you know, be very slick. Be very slick, be very tricky, be very, very deceiving, very sly and treacherous, you know what I'm saying? So it says timonid, right? Timonid. When you go into that word timonid, it could also mean like timonus, or it, it, it it's it's uh alluding to timon, right? If I know who timon is, right? Let me let me show who timon is. When I say timon is T-E-M-A-N, right? Who is this right here? Let me show you right here. All right. Timon was one of the sons of Esau, all right? And that's the, that's the same word that was used right here to, to, uh, to um, identify the dynasty of, uh, of Alexander, right? So the word Timonite or Timonus or Timonite, all those words are, are the same in, in a sense. All those words are, are the same in a sense. But that's, that's the way that they try to like, you know, be slick with how they uh hide who they really are. But like I said, the word teaming or teamonite, teamonite, however, however you want to say it, it all it all goes back to Esau's grandson, Teeman. All right. That's where it all goes back to. And they try to hide that to make it seem like that, you know, that that's not who they are, but that's who that's who you are. Alexander, Alexander, he was a white man. He was a white man. All right. So you know, it's it's it's, it's as clear as day. So let me continue. Let me continue. So now let's go into the Edenized or the Edoni. And off the rip, it already, it already looks like Eden. Off the rip. Even though it's, it has Edan or Edenai or Edenites or whatever, however you want to say it. But literally, that's the same. It's, it's close to the same as Edomite. Edom, Edan, or whatever, however you want to say it. But I think in the... Uh, in the, I think in the, in the uh, Corne Greek, in the Corne Greek, the way the way the word uh in the uh, not, not the word the way the letter N and M can be used, they can be somewhat interchangeable. The 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 letter N and M can be interchangeable. You know what I'm saying? So the way N may sound, it may sound like an M, it may sound like an N. It it all, it all depends. But the, the whole the whole point is right, is that literally this is another way to like you know identify who they are. All right, let me click on, click, click on a link real quick. Let's read it. So the Edena, Edonis, Eden, Eden, Edonians, or Edenas, says Greek, were a Thracian people, a Thracian people who most likely dwelt between the Nestus and the Stamon rivers, or Stramon rivers in southern Thrace. All right. And it says also dwell among the Stramon people, okay, as far as the Axios. All right. And that's it, that's somewhere in the uh, in North Macedonia, all right, in North Macedonia. Now, it says they were a Thracian people. Let's let's look 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 at this. Look at this. They were a Thracian people. Look how look how look at this uh archae- archaeological proof of how the Thracians look like. Does this does this look, look like a black man? This this is this is a straight white man right here. Straight white man. And look what it says. The Thracians were Indo-European speaking people. Who inhabited large parts of Eastern and Southeastern Europe in ancient history, right? And this is just some proof to what they look like. This, this is a whole white man with straight curly, straight hair. This whole white man. That's who the Edenites were, or Edomites. Edoni, Edon, Edom. Same difference. You know what I'm saying? The same difference. These, that's who the Edomites were. All right. Even when you go into like you know more evidence. And more archaeology, you can see how it looks like a like a white person. Look at this archaeology right here. 
does does this look like a, a black man? This is a straight white man right here. What it says right here, illustration of the fifth and fourth century BC Thracian pelt pel test. Look at this, a whole white man, a whole white man. This is archaeology of it, a whole white man. You, like one thing that you can't deny is archaeology. That's one thing you can't deny is archaeology. You can't deny it at all. Look at this. Look at this. Xerxes tomb relief. Let's see if I can find another one real quick. I think I probably got one of my own right here. Look, look, look at this. Does this look this look look at this? Does this not look like a white white people to you? Does this not look like white people to you? Does it not look like white people to you at all? This, this is straight white people. No melanin, nothing. Just straight white people. Straight white. Straight white. Look at all of them. It says, Thracian, Thracian king and queen. All right. In 4th century BCE. And they have a whole other tomb with more, more archaeological proof of how Esau's the white man. There's more proof. So all, all of this goes back, even right here, all, all of this goes back to, you know, just proving how Esau or the white man comes from Esau. And even all these other, you know, nations like the Edenites and whatever, Edenites, Timonid, uh, Timan, Macedonians, all, all of this goes back to the Edomites, all right? All of it does, okay? So now let me go to the Romans real quick. The Romans and the, the Latins. I'm going to go to the Romans and the Latins real quick because... I feel like this, this is something that's very important to um know as well. So Zepho, right? Zepho. Let me let me bring up my notes real quick. Because there, there was a note that I took down, and it was from I forgot exactly where where, where this is from, but I know there was a, a certain um a certain scholar who wrote this. But it's right here. All right, let me just kind of zoom in. I don't know if I can see it, but I'm I'm just reading for y'all. But it says Kidum. Appointed uh, Zepho, Zepho, son of Elijah, uh, uh, um, Elisha, and grandson of Esau as king. So Zepho was appointed king by Kittim, all right, with the title of Janus Saturnus. And even that, that word right there, Janus Saturnus, first of all, Janus, that, that goes into January, Roman calendar. That's that's a one. And then Saturnus, that goes to, to the Roman god Saturn or Sat, Sat, Saturn or whatever, even to the, to the planets. But Janus comes from January, Saturn, Saturn, Saturn's day, Saturn, all, all that stuff connect, all of it, into the Roman culture. You know what I'm saying? Then it says the first king of Rome, Rome or, or Mulus, is a distant successor of the of the lineage. So it's saying that, that the Roman king, the Roman king, is a is a uh, is part of the lineage of Zepho, which which goes back to Esau. All right, the Roman king has a lineage. That goes back to Esau, connects to Esau, which is the white man, once again. And let you know how the Romans, they were white people. The Romans were white people, all right? Now to the Latins, right here. It says the Latins, sometimes known as uh, Lat Latians, were an Italic tribe, Slakia, mainly like from uh, Rome, Italy, Rome, right? Which included the early inhabitants of the city of Rome, all right? Slakia. It says right here. Latium has been suggested to derive from the word Lat from Latin word lattice, wide abroad, referring by extension to the plains of the region in contrast to the mainly mountainous uh, Italian peninsula. If this is true, the Latini originally meant, um, then Latini originally meant men of the plain, all right? The word Latini, which, go, which, which comes from Latin, it means men of the plain. Latini means men of the, men of the plain, all right? Now let's see. Let's let's go to Genesis twenty-five real quick to show y'all how that same same phrasing is used for Esau. Genesis twenty-five twenty-seven. It reads right here. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Esau was a man of the field, man of the man of the plain, man of the field. Same thing. Let me show you how this word "field" also means plain. All right, man of the field. Field, land, cultivated field, home of wild beasts, plain, opposed to mountain, land, opposed to sea. All this stuff connects, bro. All of it. All of it connects, all right? All of it. 
all of it connects, okay? But the whole point is that literally when it comes down to how the uh how Esau was described, how the lattice was described, they were both considered men of the plain or men, men of the field, okay? They were both considered men of the plain or men, or men of the field, the lattice and, and Esau, which is very ironic and it's, in my opinion, it's not, not, not a coincidence, not a coincidence at all, okay? Now let's go into some prophecy to show you exactly how the Edomites moved how they moved around the world and, and where they where they came from and all this stuff and where they live. But Jeremiah 49 and 8. Start of, I'm starting verse 7. It reads, Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more unto man, which is which once again is uh Esau's grandson, is counsel perished from the prudent, is their wisdom vanished. Flee ye, turn back the well deep, O habit, inhabitants of the Dan, inhabitants of the Dan. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. So this is going to all go back to, um, it's going to connect to letting you know how the Edomites or whatever, the Edomites, they um were um taken out of their country. They were pushed out of, out of their country, you know what I'm saying, out of their land. They had to be, they had to force themselves or they were forced to go and live in, in caves and stuff. That's where the whole idea of caveman came from, all right? Let me go to Job 30 real quick. Job 30, start of verse 5 through 6. It reads, They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief, to the well in the cliffs of the valleys and caves of the earth and in the rocks. All right. Even when you go, let me find that verse real quick. I know there's another verse where it says that they, 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 um, the they, they live in the cliffs of the rock. Right here, Obadiah 1 and 3. I started verse one, but it says the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor that the Lord and ambassadors sent among the heathen, arise ye and let us go, uh, let us rise up against her in battle, All right? Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride, look, he said, I made, have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised, All right? The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee Thou, though thou uh, that the will of Slakia, thou that the will of in the cliffs of the rock, in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high. All right. So literally, that that lets you know how you know. Once again, it was prophesied how they were going to uh, be taken out of the, out of their land and be forced to live in a cage and everything. That's what it means when it says that they live in the cliffs of, cliffs of the rock. When they live in the cliffs of the rock, they live they live in, a, in those caves. That's where the whole idea. Once again, it's where the whole idea of caveman came from. Let me show you something real quick. Because if you look up, if you look up a caveman, you won't never see a, a black man depicting a caveman. Look at this. You won't never see a black man depicting a caveman. This is a full-fledged white person depicting the caveman. You will never see a black person that would that will ever depict the caveman at all. At all. All right. Which lets you know how that even goes back to the to the Esau. To Esau, all right. That goes back to Esau. Okay. Now, uh, whew, so lucky, yeah, so lucky, yeah. All right, let me go to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 36, not 35. Ezekiel 36 and 5, it reads, Therefore, thus said the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. And against all Idumia. Idumia, who is that? That represents Edom, Edomites, or Esau. All right. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Um, right here. Literally says East, East, Idumia means Edom. Edom. Edom, Edomite, Idumian, descendants of Esau, land of Edom, Idumia. All this stuff goes back to Esau. All right. That's where it all goes back to. Okay. Which I have appointed there. Slaka, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with despite with slaka, the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. All right. So once again, this all goes, like I said, all connects to how Esau they were going to be taken out of their land and you know they were going to be um the willing in caves. All right. Now let me go on to Jack because a lot of people may try to say how Jack was that's where the white man came from. All right. But people gotta understand when you go into history and everything, and we go deep into uh 
archaeology as well is clear proof, clear proof how the Edomites um, are, are from Esau and also how the white man, I mean, not the white man, how the original Jephites or whatever, they were melanated, melanated people, okay? The, the original Jephites, they were melanated people, all right? So look, Genesis 10, to the son of Japheth, so you got Gomer, Magog, Madiah, and I'm, I'm against the Madiah, that those are those are the bees. That's what that's what Madiah is. But all this, all this uh, refer, is in reference to uh, Russia, though. Gomer, Magog, and everything, all that's in reference to Russia. So Madiah, the Medes, or Madiah, Middle Land, that came from Japheth, all right. And also, like I said, uh, Magog, that's that's Russia. Javon, Tabal, Meshek, Tereth, that, that's like Egypt and stuff. Ashkenaz, all, all these all these places are are um are in Europe. All right. Now, what people what people may say is that oh look, it says Ashkenaz. That goes back to the Ash, Ashkenazi Jews. Let me say this: just because a nation is named after somebody does not mean that that's where their origins come from. All right. Just because they call themselves the Ashkenazi Jews and just because they live there, that does not mean that that's where their origins are. Okay. Like for us, for example, right. The blacks, the Spanish, I mean, the blacks and everything, or the Negroes, they were not originally here, all right? wasn't the wasn't the wasn't a bunch of us, you know what I'm saying? That was that was here, you know what I'm saying? Our our land started somewhere else. It didn't start over here, but oh, uh, just because, fuck you, just because somebody currently lives in Ashkenaz or in Europe right now, does not mean that they're the actual, you know, what I'm saying European. At one point in time. All the people that, that resided in Europe were melanated at one point in time. And I'm, I'm gonna prove that to y'all through archaeology. Because you, you can't you can't debunk that at all, right? So let me show you something real quick. Go to Daniel 9. Let's talk about Darius real quick. All right. Daniel 9 and 1. The first year of Darius, the son of uh Osiris, all right. Of the seed of the Medes. He was of the seed of the Medes. As I, as I showed to y'all, the word Medes. Is in reference to uh Madaya, Madaya right here, Madaya, which is also a part of the lineage of Esau, all right, or not Esau, yeah, not Esau, Japheth, all right. Madaya is a, is a part of the lineage of Japheth, okay, which are the Russians, all right. So let me go to some archeo archaeological proof showing you how Darius look. Just look at this. Does this look like a white man to you, or any features of a white man? Dude got literally got curls in, in his in his in his in his hair. Like actual like like coils in his hair. You know what I'm saying? Then to make it even even worse for y'all, the main thing that, that the white man is Jaffa. Literally, like look at this. This is a uh, it's archaeological archaeological proof of what David looked like. This is a melanated man. This don't look white to me at all. All right. Even when you go further, the true skins. The true skins. They were the original people of Italy. Now look, look at this. The Etruscan terracotta relief in 600 BC. This is, is a relief or um, archaeological proof of how the Etruscans look, look like this. Does this look, look like a white man to me? Does this look, look like a white man? To me, it don't. Because I don't see any feature on this, on this, on this uh, little relic, right, relic that shows how white men are, are from Jaffa. That's no, another thing. Also, the Manoans, the Manoans. This is archaeological proof of how the Manoans looked like back then. These are melanated people, or these are not white people at all. All right, look, look, look at the Jerry curls, and they're here. It's clear proof that these these are not white people, or so-called unmelanated people. Even the Vikings, the Vikings back then, right? Even the Vikings, they were melanated. All right. Literally everything that you know that you heard of back then, like they lied about. They lied about all that stuff. Lied about how we look or how the how the rich people look. They just whitewashed everything. You know what I'm saying? But look at this right here. It says the Norse Vikings who invaded England were described in chronicles as black men. The black Vikings raided raided Long Island in uh 795 and in 852. They should attack the city of at at, at, at modern day Dublin, Dublin. In 1867, the Black Norsemen would take the city uh, of York and establish a permanent 
permanent presence in England. All right. So this is all before um before the Middle Ages too. Because when we go to the Middle Ages, the Middle Ages was a funny time where melanated, melanated, melanated people they ruled in Europe. All right. And I'm gonna make a video about the bottomless pit because I gotta do that at one point in time to help y'all understand, you know what I'm saying, those those prophecies and all that stuff. But at one point in time, um before the Bob, Bob before the uh, the beast was was uh released from his bot bottomless pit in Revelation 20, we ruled in Europe. You had melanated people that ruled in Europe, all right. So this 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 is all this stuff just clear evidence letting you know how the white man is Esau. And also how Japheth is not the white man. The white man, they're not coming from Japheth. The original Japheth, they were melanated, okay? The original Japheth were melanated, melanated, all right? Now, let's let's get ready to close this thing out. Let's get ready to close this thing out. I'm going to go to Second Edges real quick. <sighs> second Edges 6 and 9, it reads, for Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau will be the last ruling kingdom at this point in time. Like when it comes down to who's going to be the last ruling people, whoever the Edomites are, it's going to be them. If you don't believe that it's the white man, whoever it is, they're going to be ruling. They after them, that is when Jacob and his people and the Israelites, they're going to prevail. All right. As of right now, whoever or whoever the Edomites are, which I'm I'm I'm, I'm 100% proven, and it is a white man, but whoever they are, though, they're the ones that's going to, you know, um, be the last ones to rule over us, okay? The last ones to rule. The last ones. All right. Uh, and let me, let me skip down to Daniel. Let me go to Daniel 2 real quick. Hold on. I'm going to Daniel 2. To kind of explain his vision a little bit. So Daniel 2, I'm starting verse 40. And you can look at the headings too, and, and it'll show you who it's talking about. But at the same time, too, a lot of scholars will approve of, the, of that same notion. It's not just it's not just being said, you know what I'm saying, um, in the headings. Like this literally a, a scholar, you know what I'm saying? Um, many scholars approve of what you call it, uh Daniel 2 and 40 talking about Rome. All right. Many of a lot of them do. So verse 40, it reads, it says right here, look, Rome. Keep in mind, talking about Rome. Keep in mind, talking talk, talk about Rome. All right, keep, keep that in mind. It says, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as, as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the part of powder's clay, a part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with uh, mirror clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of the, part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Right. So literally, this this uh, Roman Roman Empire that's talking about, they're gonna there's gonna be some disputes going on going on you know in Europe or in, in this uh, in this empire. How literally there's not gonna be too too much getting along. You know what I'm saying? And if you look over there in Europe right now. It's not too much getting getting along, you know what I'm saying? There's a, a lot of a lot of uh, disputes going on. You got a nation fighting against nation, wars and rumors of wars. All that stuff is going on now in, in Europe and also with, within the uh, revised Roman Empire. You know what I'm saying? There there's no you know what I'm saying uh there, there's no organization. There's no connection going on. There's no association. It's just it's all violence, all just against against each other. You know what I'm saying? So let me continue to read verse 43. Let me let me go to verse um 44. It reads, And in the days of these kings shall the God of the shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, talking about the Israelites, right? Which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to, to the other people. Let me say, let me say it again. And the kingdom shall not be left to the other people. That's a clear cut of how anybody, anybody try to say, oh, you can become a spiritual Israelite. It says right here in Daniel 2 and 44, the kingdom shall not be left to the other people. So nobody can just become a part of Israel. If you're not a part of it already, you cannot become a part of it. It's not for you. 
The kingdom shall be not left to any other people besides them. That's the cut. So if anybody try to say something about spiritual Israel or grafting in or whatever, how other people can come into this thing, literally the prophecy, Daniel the prophet, prophet said that this kingdom shall not be left to anybody else but them. It's only for them. Then it says this, look, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. So all these kingdoms mentioned up here, she, she got, you got the Rome, Medo-Persian, Greek, Babylon, literally all this, all this in reference to, to the white man, but it's saying how in a, in a wider sense, this kingdom is not for anybody else but them. And it won't be left to anybody else but them. You know what I'm saying? But literally, the Most High is going, to, is going to cause a havoc on all these other kingdoms. You know what I'm saying? It's going to use us to destroy these kingdoms, all right? Especially, you know what I'm saying, the Roman kingdom. Because the Roman kingdom is going to be the last kingdom ruling on, on this earth until the Most High returns. Or send the Son to return, all right? Now, let me go to Revelation real quick. Because because if you go to Revelation 12 and 3, it talks about this dragon. And that, that same dragon is in reference to uh, the Roman Empire, all right? That's in Daniel. Let me start at verse 1. It says, and even these headings, these headings let you know who it's talking about, like clear as day. But um, it, it shouldn't take a, a scientist to even understand who's talking about either, either way. But it reads, Revelation 12 and 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. That's talking about the Israelites, right? 12 tribes of Israel, okay? And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pains to be delivered. That says the red dragon Satan, right? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and uh, did cast to the earth. And the dragon uh, stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her children as soon as it was born, for to devour her child as soon as it, as it was born. So, as you know, as it says right here, the woman was Israel, right? The woman is Israel. It even says right here that, that the child is Christ. So it doesn't say who the beast is or who the dragon is, but the dragon is, is the Romans. That's the one. I'm, I'm going to prove to y'all how, how it's wrong with the Roman Empire. I'm going to prove that to y'all. But it says that the Romans or whoever, whoever was uh, ruling in Rome at that time, they were planning or plotting to destroy Christ, destroy this child as soon as it came out of the womb. Let's go to the, uh, to the account. That's talking about. Go to Matthew 2 and 13. I'm going to start at verse 1 to let y'all know exactly what he's talking about. Look, Matthew 2 and 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, he was born in the days of Herod the king, all right? Who was Herod? Let's look him up real quick. Who was Herod? Look what it says right here. Herod, also known as Herod the Great, was a Roman client of Judea. He was a Roman client of client king of Judea. Where was he born? In Edom. He's an Edomite. The Romans are Edomites. It's clear as day. Clear as day. But it said once again how this uh this dragon though, which I was already explained how it is the Romans. This dragon was going to was going to plot to kill uh Christ when he came out the moon. Let's go to the verse real quick. Matthew 2 and 13. And when they and when they they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his, and his mother, and take Christ and Mary, right? And flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. All right. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. That same thing is, is said in Revelation 12. How are you gonna have that dragon? When the uh, when the woman is is uh what's called when the woman birthed birthed this child, the dragon is, is gonna wanna um you know uh wanna kill this child when it, when it's born. And it's clear as day that it's talking about the Rome the Roman Roman Empire, Herod because Herod he 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 was the uh, leader of Romans, and he was an Edomite. It all connects. It all connects. All right, all of it. Now now let's let me get to the last verse real quick. Let me go to the last verse. We're gonna be done. The last verse, Lamentations 4 and 22. It reads, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, all right? The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, meaning it, it is done. O daughter of Zion, who is that? Israelites. He will no more, no more 
carry thee away into captivity no more. It was promised at this point in time that he would no more carry away the of Israelites into captivity. And he will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. And he will discover thy sins. So once again, this, this gives heed to the, to the fact that in 2 Edges 69, that Esau is the, end of, is the end of the world. And that they will be the last people ruling on this earth. Then after, after them, that is when our kingdom, our, our kingdom starts. All right. So for anybody that may try to say that the Edomites are not anybody else but the white man, if it's somebody else, they're saying that there is a, another captivity coming. If it's the Arabs, there's another captivity coming. If it's anybody else, there's another captivity coming. It all got to align with prophecy. All of it. So if you're sitting here saying that, oh, like, you know, like the Edomites are not the white man, it's clear as day through this whole entire video that, that, that I just got done making. That I just got done. Like, literally, it's, it's, it's showing you clear as day that the Edomites are the white man. Not Jack, not anybody else, but the white man. All right? And literally, there's nothing, nothing but just bad that's going to be given to them in the future, all right? They're literally, they're literally, they're literally going to be extinct, you know, when God's done with them. Let me go to Obadiah real quick. Obadiah 118, I'm, I'm, I'm going to close it out after this. But it reads, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining, let me read it again, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. Not me, not anybody else, the Lord. The Lord said there will not be any remaining of the house of Esau. That's how much he hates them. He's going to cause them to go extinct. That's how much he hates them. He's not going to have, have this seed prolonged any longer. You know what I'm saying? He's going to kill them at some point. At some point, he's going to, he's going to kill them. All right? So for those who, 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 you know, are kind of confused on this topic of whether or not Esau is the white man, it's clear as day. It's clear as day throughout this whole video, and it's, it's clear proof. Clear proof. There's, there's nothing, there, I don't think there's anything you can really, really dispute, for real, in my opinion. There's not much you, you can dispute, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? But um, hopefully this video edified y'all. Hopefully it made a, a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of sense. I'm saying hopefully it made a lot of sense, um, you know, and we're going to continue to push the truth to y'all, you know what I'm saying, continue to edify the people, help y'all understand, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, more more truth, not just about who Esau is, but also about, you know what I'm saying, who we are, because that's that's one thing that, you know, like I said, even though knowing, knowing who Esau is, knowing who your enemy is, it is important. It is important to know, know about the history to, you know, um, Make sure that you're speaking truth and that you, you're able to identify who your enemy is. Also, at the same time, too, able to uh, edify people when they have questions about something. Because, like I said, anytime somebody may try to ask you a question, you got to be ready. You always got to be 10 toes down. You got to be ready. You can't you can't freeze up all the time. You know what I'm saying? Or try to try to rely on, you know, um, uh, just your 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 um your camp leader. To just always bail you out. Like, no, sometimes you need to you need to be able to go out there yourself and be and be and be put in that fire. You know what I'm saying? When you're putting that fire, you know, it's, it's gonna kind of be uh a little bit nerve-wracking, a little bit for, for some people, but it'll it'll help you know that you gotta study more or you gotta pay attention to more. It, it all depends. But hopefully in this video, y'all got y'all got edified through the spirit and also understanding who uh Esau is. But other than that, though, I love y'all. Um, peace and shalom. Shalom.